Hey everyone, this is Johnny MD, and I'm really excited to show you my favorite nomad destinations. What's up to everyone in Hungary, in Budapest? <laughs> What's up, guys? I really liked it there. Uh, right now, I'm actually in Bali, and I want to show you all the cool places, not only here, why this may be a good nomad destination for you guys to travel to, uh, but also my other favorite places in the world. So, if you don't know who I am, um, I'm the founder of the Nomad Summit, which is the annual digital nomad conference held in Chiang Mai. We've had three years running and I'm also the host of the Travel Like a Boss podcast. We've had over 150 interviews with different location independent entrepreneurs and digital nomads around the world. So I met and talked to a lot of people who are traveling full time, making enough money online to continue traveling basically the world uh, and enjoying their lives. And they combined, we have literally traveled the entire world. Uh, I also have a blog where I talk about cost of living, um, business, travel, and adventure and lifestyle at johnnyfd.com. If you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you guys take a photo of this and subscribe. Uh, last year, I went to 17 countries and I've been traveling full time since 2008. I worked for a few years as a dive master uh, all around Thailand and Borneo to the Caribbean, to Australia, <laughs> dove in Hawaii. Uh, last year, I was building my businesses and I was all around Europe. I was in, in Hungary. Uh, I was went all the way east <laughs> to Ukraine, all the way west to Portugal. So I've seen a lot of cool places. And currently I am in Bali, Indonesia. So first off, let me tell you a little bit about Bali and what it's like over here. So why Bali? Why, why do people come here? First off, you have warm weather. Uh, the cost of living is pretty low, especially compared to Europe. Uh, and we have a growing nomad scene here. It's not quite as popular as places like Chiang Mai, Thailand, but it's definitely growing. I would say if you go to places like Ubud, you'll probably meet you know, 50 other digital nomads at any of the co-working spaces there. Uh, there's Hubud, uh, which is the very first one, and Outpost, which is also a great space that opened more recently. The internet, if you may have heard about Bali, it used to be terrible. It used to be the worst in the world, which prevented a lot of people from coming. I'm happy to announce that as of at least 2017, the internet is actually good enough. It's not perfect. It's not as good as most of Europe. It's not as good as Thailand, but it's definitely usable now, especially if you go to one of the co-working spaces. Uh, but the main reason why people come to Bali, besides good weather, you know, good food, low cost of living, which you can get in other countries like in Thailand, it's because Bali has both co-working as well as beaches and scuba diving. So I know not everyone's a scuba diver, but if you haven't done it, put it on your bucket list. It's amazing. I'm going to show you some videos of what the diving is like here in Bali uh, just in a second. But the main reason why people come is because people miss the water, people miss the beach. So you can live in Ubud, which technically isn't near any water, but on weekends, it's only an hour and a half to any of the beaches, uh, You know, maybe two hours to some of the further ones, but it's easy enough where you can go for the whole weekend or even just for a day. You can surf in places like Chenggu or in Kuda, uh, or you can go diving on the East Coast like I'm actually doing <laughs> tomorrow morning. So let me show you uh, some of the videos of what Bali is like and, and what kind of the fun things there are to do here. So here is one of the weekend dives that you can go to just from Bali. It's just a few hours by car for about $120 or so on a weekend, you can be underwater with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of fish. This place is called the Liberty Wreck. Uh, this is called Tulaman. It's just kind of like a coastal town on the East Coast. And even though there's no beach in Ubud, it's so easy to be able to just take a day trip and be able to dive in warm tropical water I mean, the water here is probably 28 degrees so it's it's beautiful I mean like you can't do this in in Europe and not freeze to death it's a lot cheaper um, to do in Bali as well I mean, you can become a dive master or you can just do a one-day trial dive for about 120 bucks and be able to see like you know some of the world's best coral um, a big variety of different fish and whether you want to be a dive master like 
I did uh, as a job for a while, uh, or you just want to do it as a hobby and explore and do other cool things and see things like, you know, sea turtles and things like, I, I never really dreamed of seeing um, when I was living back home. This is all possible here. You know, you can work out of a co-working space or at a cafe Monday through Friday, meet a bunch of cool other nomads from around the world and say, hey, let's go diving over the weekend. You know, this is my buddy Chris and I'm traveling with. And it's it's crazy that we're able to build a business online, location dependently, over, you know, during the week. And then the weekends, still earn enough passive income while we're literally underwater to be able to cover the cost of the trip and then be able to do it all over again. So I highly, highly recommend everybody put scuba diving on your bucket list. It's one of these adventures. I mean, it's probably the closest thing that we all have to go into space uh, anytime soon. And I guarantee you, <laughs> there's a lot more uh, to see underwater than there would be even in space. So this is kind of a, one of those things that we should take advantage of because we can. So let me show you some of the other cool things that I really enjoy doing here in Bali. So something else that's amazing about Bali is how close you are to all the other islands in Indonesia. This is actually Komodo, which if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of like the Galapagos of Asia or the West. And it's a lot cheaper to get there. Um, flights are less than $100 uh, each way. And once you're there, you can scuba dive you can see komodo dragons you can it's, it's amazing here it, just take a look but the, the journey is kind of half the fun of getting there so right away you notice that you're on some kind of propeller plane and once you get to the airport in, in laban bajo which is the port city you have to take a boat over to wherever you're staying so i stayed at a place called scuba junkie komodo and it was about I would say $100, $150 a night, but it was all inclusive, so it included all your meals, included the transport from the airport uh, to the kind of remote destination. There's all also these like liverboards that you can stay on, but these are generally about $250 to $400 a night, uh, also all inclusive, so it includes all your food, your scuba diving, and it's, it's an adventure. I mean, th this is like something out of Jurassic Park that you really can't experience anywhere else. <laughs> these guys are it's it's pretty funny um seeing kind of like the way things are done in these remote parts of the world still in 2017 i mean this guy is literally dragging the boat because it's too shallow to to use the the motor and he is taking us to this little tiny you know resort in the middle of nowhere there's no wi-fi but luckily, as of this year, there is 3G uh, even in the remote places like here. So even on the dive sites, two hours away on the actual, you know, in the actual Komodo National Park, you can get 3G. So uh, Chris and I are actually tethering. We brought our laptops because it's a pretty long boat ride, maybe two or three hours out to the dive sites. So whether you're snorkeling or scuba diving, if you're just on the boat, Instead of just hanging around, you know, um, or taking a nap like most people did, you can crush work. You can basically, you know, do whatever you need to do, catch up on your emails, and enjoy the day diving, come back, have a beer, lay in a hammock, and know that you're making enough passive income where you can afford, you know, the $150 a night and be able to enjoy paradise while being location and, and, and working. Everybody else here at the, these resorts, they all had normal jobs. They're taking you know one or two weeks off, and this is kind of their their vacation. But for us, this is our lives as digital nomads. These are our lives. <laughs> all right. So if you think Bali and Komodo is awesome so far, this video, this last video I want to show you is really gonna blow you away. This is one of those kind of like lifetime epic journeys that you never thought you would experience. You know, I never thought I was gonna experience this. And it is diving with giant manta rays.
So these guys are super rare. I mean, there's very few places in the world that you can see them. And unfortunately, their population is decreasing worldwide. So it's one of those things that you have to see it sooner than later. And it's going to be, you know, such a sad kind of sight knowing that our future generations, our future kids may not ever get to swim with manta rays or sharks or, you know, uh, or whales in the wild anymore. So we really have to take advantage of it and also be the, the voice to spread the, you know, spread the news, get more people underwater. So we have a reason to conserve this beautiful nature. If you want to make a big change, you kind of have to see it for yourself and, and see, you know, the coral dying and the sea you know, what it's supposed to look like, like this, and how freaking amazing it is. So, as digital nomads, aside from just being able to make enough money so we can you know, continue traveling and enjoy life, we want to be able to, you know, to be whatever change we want to be. So, I was super fortunate to see this, and I would love for each and every one of you to be able to experience the same. All right, so I hope you enjoyed some of these quick videos. If you want to see the rest of them, uh, or you want to watch them in HD, just go to YouTube and look for Johnny FD. And I have a bunch of videos on there, including more diving, uh, and also you know kind of fun videos like the ones that that we took in um, in Ubu, just driving around getting lost. But more than that, I want to sh leave with you guys with not just you know what's cool here in Bali, but alternatives to Bali. So the downsides to Bali is number one. It's the infrastructure isn't here yet. Uh, it's much, much worse than anywhere in Europe. And even though the internet now is actually very usable, especially at a co-working space, it's not as stable uh, as you know other places. If you're uploading, you know, large data files or video, you're gonna have a tough time unless you happen to be at one of the co-working spaces and everything is working fine. Even day-to-day -day life is a little bit hard because you know there's. A big issue where most places don't take credit card and you're using you know just this rupiah and if you guys haven't seen what it's like basically it's like these it's like play money this is a million rupiah right here and it's only worth 75 bucks <laughs> so it's very confusing nobody takes credit card well very few places take credit card and they charge you three percent and they do nobody takes tap or apple pay or samsung pay so it's just not as easy of a life than it is back home and the other problem is when you go to use atms you have to be really careful because a lot of people will get scammed with the atms either their cards cloned or skimmed and this isn't just something you read um online but this actually happens to people i travel with and it's a worry all the time and it's just kind of a, a pain to be honest um same thing with transportation uh uber here is technically banned uh, by kind of the local mafia so it's really hard to get around you either have to try your luck and call them you know an hour in advance and three or four times to try to get an uber or you have to ride a scooter so if you're not willing to ride a scooter don't come to bali uh, because it's it's very very hard to actually get around so what are some alternatives uh is Chiang Mai is still my favorite place you know I've been based out of there for the last four years and I usually spend about six months of the year in Chiang Mai because as good infrastructure, people are very friendly. Uh, it's very easy to get money from the ATM, you know, and get around without feeling like you're gonna get scammed. Uh, and the infrastructure is really good. The Wi-Fi is amazing. Wherever you go, you can get, you know, 30 megabytes uh, per second uh, up and down, even at a cafe. Uh, at Coring Spaces is also really good. So it's great for people that want to have, you know, upload large videos or just have stable internet um if surprisingly even better than chiang mai is warsaw poland uh and that is so close to you guys in, in hungary or the you know people in europe and people don't think about it but poland is one of the cheapest places in the world to be a nomad great internet the freaking best i mean literally 300 megabytes up and down at cafes and google has a free core space in Poland in Warsaw because they love it so much. Krakow is also a nice place uh, to check out. I've written about both of them on my blog, Johnny FD. Just search for Warsaw Krakow, and you can read, you know, basically about any of the places I've been. Because uh, I like sharing this information. That's why you know I agreed to come on here is because I want this movement to be able to grow, and I want everyone to be able to have the same life that I've somehow figured out my on my own, and also with the help of all the people I've met. 
Uh, so if you really want to have beach and you want to be able to co-work, Lisbon, Portugal is the best place that I found. Uh, slightly more expensive and you know not as um, built up as Warsaw is, but I think it's also top place. If you insist on coming to Bali, the place to be would be Ubud. Uh, that is where all the other nomads are. That's where kind of the most stability with internet is. Uh, read my guide on johnnyfd.com to Ubud um, and to the other places that I've been in Bali, including Changu, now Komodo. So if you guys ever have any questions, if you guys have any questions, <laughs> just uh, we're gonna do a QA and a right now uh, for everyone who's live in Budapest and everyone who's watching this at home or the recording of it, leave a comment below, check out my blog, johnnyfd.com and I'm happy to answer it.